Hi everyone, it's Don, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, let's talk about a few things today. We got some questions that people were asking me and wondering why I don't cover this too much on the channel. I'll answer that. Let's talk about a brand new cruise port that just started during the reopening. First time a ship is sailing out of that. And uh, you gotta talk about uh, something that I should have been doing right now. Okay, first thing out of the out of the out of the loop here is we uh, we should have been on the Mardi Gras today, but as you know, I had troubles when Carnival announced that they would no longer be testing vaccinated passengers for their flights home, which means as a Canadian citizen needing a PCR test, I need to arrange a test getting off the ship. I would have had to change my flights. I would lose the money on the flights and that was expensive. I had a seat sale and to replace them was like a thousand dollars. So I should have been on the Carnival Mardi Gras right now uh, with my buddy Tony. Unfortunately, he also had to pa uh, pass on the cruise with his wife Jenny because uh, they wanted to make sure that they are get double shot, triple shot it of the vaccine with the new CDC guidelines uh, because of, you know, underlying conditions and uh, all the power to them be as safe as you can possibly be no no qualms about that and uh yeah I i've been looking at some of the videos of people who are actually on the ship right now and they're going through a little bit of a rough rough, rough patch today uh because it was uh the eye not the eye of the hurricane but the outskirts of that hurricane storm still some rough seas out there i hope they can get up and enjoy some of the weather up top but it did look pretty stormy on there from what i saw but this ship is huge and large and will handle the waves no problem. It's just, uh, will you be able to enjoy that roller coaster or things like that? I'm sure in a few days, all this will clear up and they'll have a, a much calmer or better time. At least I hope they do anyway. The inaugural sailing kind of thing, like the first four or five sailings, it's taking out all the bugs and now you have those hurricanes to deal with. It's just it, not necessarily a fun thing. One thing that is fun, though, the Carnival pa Panorama set sail from the West Coast. That's right, another cruise port down in the L.A. area finally set sail. That means there's another cruise port that's opening as the restart continues. Now we need to get some more of those East Coast cruise ports up and running and we'll be laughing in the United States, at least at least, at least if they stay open and we can keep things going in a right direction because uh, things right now, as far as the pandemic is going, are getting a little bit worse right now in the United States as far as numbers are concerned. It all depends on those restrictions they bring in. I know here in Canada, even though our, our rates are way, way less than the United States and way, way down compared to everything there, they're holding off on opening anything else new and lifting any restrictions until they see if what's going to happen with this possible fourth wave. So I want it all to go down, all to go away, everything to get back to normal. And then we can see all these cruise ports begin to open. Can't wait to announce those East Coast cruises because once they start, that means Canadian cruises are all set to go next year as well. Now, quickly, before I go into all those questions that I see that people saying, hey, how come you don't, you can't answer these on your channel? Well, let me just quickly invite you to subscribe so you do find out all the answers that I can answer on the channel, as well as the news, the updates, and keeps you informed of all things cruising. Doesn't cost anything, really, really does help the channel, and I would appreciate it immensely. It really, really does help. So one of the questions I get is, can I go into cruise insurance detail and recommend cruise? I, I can't. It's actually, as a travel agent, uh, I can get in a lot of trouble for uh, saying that this uh, travel agency does this insurance does this and this insurance does that and this. All I can do is recommend. Recommend uh, what to look for when you're looking for your insurance. You can look for COVID right now and evacuation insurance. That's your main thing. Evacuation, medical, COVID, make sure those are covered. There's a lot of insurance companies, Alliance Cruise Lines. I just found RBC Cruise Line, uh, RBC Bank just started their cruising back up again. 
Uh, the cruise lines have their cruise insurance. Read it over, look at what they cover, and see if you need any additional. But to come out and say, yeah, this company covers that, and then next week all of a sudden they don't cover it anymore, or a month from now they don't cover it, and somebody did book that saying that he told me it would cover me, I could technically be liable. So that's one of the reasons we really don't go too much into detail on insurance. I can, you know, the best thing to do is to call an insurance company themselves, talk to a representative, tell them what you need, tell them what you want, and see if they offer it. And like I said, right now, it's it's a minefield to kind of navigate, but that's one of the reasons that I, I, I stick away from that. Kind of question I get asked all the time, is it worth being a travel agent? How do I answer that? <laughs> uh, I like being a travel agent, but I have a unique circumstance. I like travel. I love going cruising. I love taking videos while I'm on cruising. I love doing this channel. And they all tie in together. That's one of the great things about what I'm doing right now. But when I first started without the YouTube channel and just being a travel agent, it's a long, lonely road to build up a clientele. You don't have a built-in clientele unless you're coming from a corporation or someplace, you know, like big in the church services and you have a congregation who might come to you for your business. You can go a long, long time before you make any money in the travel industry, especially right now with the way the travel industry is up in turmoil. So I can't really answer, is it worth it for you? All I can answer is, is it worth it for me? And, and it was, and it is. And so far I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, number question that I also get, number three is, what cruise line is best? Again, this is so subjective, right? Uh, if I was a younger person interested in a lot of visual fun things and tattoos and the Scarlet Lady looks perfect for me. If I'm looking for jazz and I'm looking for an old world cruise, then maybe I'm looking towards Holland America. If I'm looking for adventure, then I'm looking at an expedition type cruise line. Do I want to go scuba diving? Do I want to go surfing? Do I want to go skydiving? Do I want to go on a skating rink? Then I want Royal Caribbean. You see, it, it really depends on your own personality. What are your preferences? So here's, here's what I'll tell you about myself. I am approaching 60 years old. I have done all the kinds of cruises, all the types of cruise ships. I've now settled into those cruise ships that I don't need a flow rider. I don't need a zip line. I want good food, a clean ship, and good entertainment. And that's really all I'm looking for. And, you know, destinations. So I am... If I look at the cruise lines I want to go on, you got those really nice, uh, you know luxury cruise ships, the small ships, the luxury like Oceana, Pondit, those look beautiful. A little bit out of my price range right now. So the next best thing to me would be Princess Cruise Lines and Celebrity Cruise Lines, Carnival's premier brand and Royal's premier brand. Those are the ships that kind of draw me at the current time. And so it all really goes on, depends on you. What are you most fun doing? It's very easy. You travel, if you tell anybody who's a travel agent who's been doing cruising at any kind, just any kind, and you tell them, I like to do this, this, and this, they can direct you to a ship. They can direct you to a ship and they can direct you to a cruise line and you can decide from there because it's really easy, because every cruise line has a, their own distinct personality. Finally, finally, the, the question I get a lot, a lot, a lot. How many cruises am I up to now after over a year and a half of not being able to get on a cruise? Yeah, I'm way behind, right? Way behind. My last cruise, I gotta count them now. Here you go, you ready for this? When I went on my cruise with Tony in Japan, that was 101. And then I went on four cruises, 102, 103, 104, 105. And then we went on a cruise in February, 106, which means the cruise I was just on, on the Celebrity Edge was 107. And the cruise I'm going on next on the Majestic Princess will be 108. And I'm not going to say anything, but I will be over 110 before the end of the year.
easily. <laughs> so yeah, I cruise a lot. And especially now with all this pent up demand, I cannot wait to get back out in the ocean. I can't wait to show you guys as much as possible. Until next time, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let's see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world. Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.